iPhone, Bluetooth 4.0, Arduino compatible, open source. Introducing the RF Duino. Now watch what it can do. Multicolor LED lighting. iPhone controlled RC cars running your Arduino sketches. Drive LCD displays. Wirelessly monitor temperature. See and hear your plants talk. Measure battery voltages remotely. Link LEDs. Proximity. Servo-driven robotics. Great for props and effects. Detect sound or light, then alert the iPhone. Work with all types of sensors. Detect button presses. Control relays. Play sounds with the Arduino Melody Sketch. The RF Duino gives wireless senses to your iPhone and enables it to touch the physical world. Just think of the possibilities. Hi, my name is Armin. I'm an electrical engineer who spent decades designing and manufacturing high-performance wireless products. We're very proud to share with you, Kickstarters, the world's first wireless, coin-sized, Arduino-compatible, open-source microcomputer that can talk to your iPhone using Bluetooth 4.0. The RF Duino is a standalone board just like the Arduino Uno. In addition, the RF Duino has a powerful ARM Cortex processor and Bluetooth Low Energy 4.0 built-in, which take your projects to the next level. We already have a few stackable shield accessory boards including battery, USB, servo controller, RGB LED with push buttons, and protoboard. The RF Duino can be powered from a bench power supply, USB, wall outlet, or even a coin cell battery. The stackable miniature shield accessory boards plug directly into solderless breadboards or run fully standalone. You'll definitely want a handful of them around for all of your projects. The RF Duino, powerful enough to run your projects, small enough to fit inside your projects, and low cost enough to be used for all of your projects. So pledge now and get your own RF Duinos and join in all the excitement. We can't wait to see what you'll do with yours. Ghost is a blogging platform that is free, open source, beautifully designed, and available to anyone who wants to use it. The concept of the blog has transformed journalism in the last 10 years. Like the MP3 did to music, so some of the biggest ideas and discoveries of the last decade have been broken through the blog. And yet, in the last 10 years, not a lot has changed when it comes to the software. We're still stuck with stuff that's complicated, more complicated, full of cats and porn, or simply has no sign-up button whatsoever. And Ghost is what's going to change all of that. I know how to build blogs, and I know how to build blogging platforms. I've built blogs for Microsoft, for Nokia, for Virgin Atlantic, for EasyJet, and for many others. I also spent two years working as the deputy head of the WordPress user interface team. But WordPress has grown up, it's not really about blogging anymore. It's moved on to be about websites and content management and all sorts of amazing things. But what I care about is blogging. WordPress, by all rights, is no longer just a blogging platform, and that's exactly what Ghost is. It's just a blogging platform. It has a beautiful dashboard that shows you everything you need to know about your blog in one place. Managing your content is as simple as browsing through it. When you need to edit your content or write new content, you can see Markdown on the left and Preview on the right. It's one of the most simple and beautiful ways of writing for the web that we've ever had the pleasure of using. Uploading images directly in place where it will appear in your content just works. And adding tags or categories is quick and easy. It's mobile optimized, it'll work on any device, iOS, Android, whatever you have. And tablets as well. The split view works in both portrait and landscape modes. We've built Ghost around three really important principles. The first of that is that Ghost is built for its users. A lot of open source projects suffer from being targeted far too much at developers and that's not what we're doing. The second one is that Ghost is free. The MIT license means you can do pretty much whatever you want. No restrictions on themes, plugins, conferences, or anything else really. Lastly, and most importantly, Ghost is being made for love, not for profit. 
If successfully funded, it will be set up as a not-for-profit organization. Now, why should you care about that? Because it impacts on our motivations when we're creating the software. Do we want to make millions and sell to Facebook? Or do we want to make something that's genuinely good and serves its users, not its investors and shareholders? It's not just me working on this. I have an amazing team working with me who have the technical chops to make this happen. Rob Hawkes, technical evangelist for Mozilla until very recently, did the first pass on the ghost code. And now heading up our technical team is Hannah Wolf, senior developer at Moo.com. We've worked really hard to get to this point and we've got a working prototype, but we need your help to finish Ghost and to ship it to the world. It's not just about blogging, it's not just about making something that looks good, it's about giving writers tools to push blogging and to push journalism to the next level. We're not just making this because we want to sell it, we're making this because it needs to exist. Ghost is about the future of the freedom of speech and it needs your voice. This is huge news because Android is the most popular OS today, but it doesn't really exist on PC. We're delivering a bulletproof, sustainable version of Android that scales your apps up to high-performance PCs. PC gaming can be awesome using console OS with Android inside. We've spent the past 18 months building a new version of Android that is easy for PC makers to bake in and dual boot with Windows, and also gives a free download built just for your PC that delivers Android so you can toggle back and forth between native Windows and native Android. Late last year, we shipped the most powerful Android device ever built, iConsole.tv Unit 00, and now we're taking all that experience and packing it into console OS. And we've also licensed all the tech to make sure that Android runs perfectly on your PC from day one. Graphics is a huge part of console OS. We're the first to deliver OpenGL ES3 on the desktop using Intel graphics technology. So you're gonna be able to play amazing console quality games on PC. We're putting Google's fastest tablet up against an Intel Iris Pro laptop running console OS. And this is the same code, the same exact game. App developers can take their existing Android titles, pack in better graphics, better textures, and create truly PC and console quality games using Android and console OS on today's PCs. And I love to share this demo because you can quickly and easily toggle between other apps and the best part of all is that the game doesn't slow down. It just picks up right where you left off. We decided to debut console OS on Kickstarter so that we could have direct input from the people that will be using console OS. People that believe in the freedom of the personal computer, a device that no one uh, company or player should be able to say you can or cannot run an app on that device. Uh, we're going to give back to that community and contribute to the Android Open Source Project, making a real captivating experience that harnesses the best that technology has to offer today is a real passion of mine, and I believe Android can really deliver uh, th those kinds of experiences, and that's what we're building with Console OS. Our biggest challenge is going to be in working with the PC makers. We need your help to show the industry that Android is ready for prime time as a desktop OS. Thanks so much for your support, and stay tuned for more updates. This is Refone, the world's first open source modular phone kit that allows you to easily create your own mobile phone. With Refone, you can also enchant things with cellular connectivity. Remember, mobile phones used to be very different and are constantly evolving. Nowadays, the bulky rectangular touchscreen phones all look the same. What we need is another renaissance. What if we redesign the phone to be anything we want it to be? For the past eight years in Shenzhen, Seed Studio has been busy hacking the electronic supply chain to make advanced tools and technologies available to everyone. The result is the ReFone. The heart of the ReFone is a GSM module, featuring the world's smallest computer on a chip that easily fits to anything. Give your ReFone life by adding a touchscreen, audio, GPS, NFC motion sensor, camera, a single eye display, and many other cool modules. Just plug modules together using flexible NFC strips. Once connected, you can send text and make calls, and even program your own logic. Update your settings with a simple text, and a full power SDK, Lua, and JavaScript are ready for developers. Next, 
Give your refund a body by using the pre-cut craft paper. Play with different design patterns to make a phone unique to you. Or consider leather, bamboo, fabric, or existing objects. Even create a sturdy case using 3D printing, laser cutting, CNC, or injection molding. Imagine making a call to your dog by adding a GSM and GPS module to the dog collar. Peter, come back home now. Program your refund with if this then that logic so your dog never gets lost. Or add gyros and GSM modules to a kite and talk to the sky. Or send messages to control your robots remotely. Talk to a door, desk, bike, or tree. Hi, my name is Christian. I'm a mechanical engineer and a product designer. Thanks for coming by. I want to talk to you today about something I developed called the Hexbrite Open Source Lighting. Uh, what's open source lighting? Well, basically it's just a, a, a light that you can program however you want. Now, this started a while back when I was just fooling around with LED technology. For myself, I developed a light. I developed uh, uh, the circuit board, I put uh, the best state-of-the-art LED and microprocessor on the board and I put it in this housing and really the housing, uh, because I, I didn't have a lot of money, I bought some hex bar stock, I drilled it out and then I shaped it. And something interesting happened. Um, after I shaped it and after I anodized it, it had a very, very comfortable feel to it. And it was unusual, very, very rugged, because there's a lot of material around it. And people liked it. Plus, it was super, super bright. I mean, people really noticed how bright it was. And then I started thinking, well, um, how could I do better? Well, the next logical choice, because I was tweaking with the program on board, that it made sense to put, if I were to upgrade this, I would put a USB plug on it, and uh, I'd be able to program whatever I wanted from my laptop and just change the program however I wanted. I could have a million modes or I could have one mode. It's, it was really up to me. So um, the Hexbrite Flex design was born and the Flex is essentially the same thing as the Prime but it's USB rechargeable, USB programmable. Now I'm offering this Prime uh, to, to fundraise to, to produce the Flex. I'm offering reproductions of the Prime for $35 that's anodized in four different, one of four different colors shipped to your, directly to your house in the United States and I'm also taking pre-orders for the Flex which is a little bit more money at $60 because there's really a lot more to develop for it and um, if this is something that appeals to you if you want to have uh, uh, your own open source light then by all means please get the Flex and I'm also going to provide on my website a community of people that can share and swap source code for their light.